Hi there, my fellow Java programmer. So once you've got Maven installed, it's obviously time to create a new Maven project. And I'll run you through creating a new, clean, nice and shiny Maven project from scratch, so without copying from an existing Maven project. And then you'll also learn about the default project structure. So the POM XML file, directories, the resources and whatnot. And at the end, you'll hopefully be able to successfully build your project into a jar file. So let's get started. Okay, so in a command line window, you'll see that I just executed maven version just to make sure that I've got maven installed. And then when you want to create a project from scratch, there's another command you can execute and it's called maven archetype generate. Hit enter and then it takes a while and you'll see that suddenly there's a couple of thousand rows being printed to the console and these are all archetypes. What's an archetype? Uh, it's basically a template, a project template. So it's a ready-made or ready built Maven project that includes certain files, libraries, frameworks, even programming languages. And then you can simply pick a number and then Maven will create a project for you. And the default is number 1230. So let's just scroll up a tiny bit and see what the default archetype is. Not so easy, right? And you'll see it's the Maven archetype quick start, an archetype which contains a sample Maven project. And that's a good start, to be honest. So let's scroll down again. Not too much, right? Then go with the default. So 1230 is fine. You'll see that Maven prompts you to use a specific archetype version. That means a template version. Just pick the latest one. It's the latest, most up-to-date project version. And you put in a group ID, like com Marcobila or your own name. An artifact ID, so what's your application called? Let's call the application Bitcoin app. Version 1.0 snapshot is fine. Package is also fine. And then at the end, you just confirm the whole thing, saying yes. And then you'll see Maven created a project in the CDEV Bitcoin app. Now it's time to open up IntelliJ. Wait a second till it boots up. Hit open. Go to CDEV. You'll find the Bitcoin app. Click the POM XML file. Open this project and IntelliJ will automatically import the whole project. So let me just switch to presentation mode. Right. And then on the left, you'll see the project structure, the external libraries, we'll talk about that in a second. But basically there's only two things you have. So you have a POM XML file, that's the XML file Maven needs, which describes your project. So from the project name, the dependencies, everything that you want, your project to do gets put into the POM XML file. You've also got the source folder and inside the source folder, you've got two other folders by default, by convention. It's the main folder and the test folder. Again, uh, a Java folder under each. And it's quite simple. In source main Java, you'll put all the files which should be your production code. Source test Java is all the files that are basically test code. So unit test, integration tests and whatnot. And as you can see, Maven by default puts an app class inside source main Java, does nothing but print out hello world to the console. And you've also got a corresponding test class, which does nothing but assert that true equals true, which is fine. And you can run that test and that should work. Right. Now, one folder is missing and is the source main resources folder. So you can create it. Just create a new directory, call it resources. And what you put in that folder, you'll put files like your application properties file. So say you've got some properties like some DB password and whatnot. So DB password, blah. You could put some SQL files in there if you have to update your database. So migrations.sql. Basically anything that's not a Java class, you'll put it in, into the resource folder. 
And a quick hint is, as you can see, the icon didn't change. So the resources folder is just a plain folder. And you'll actually have to open up the Maven projects view to the right. You'll usually find to the right of idea, hit re-import the project, re-import all Maven projects. And then you'll see that the icon suddenly has another small icon on top of it. And now everything got picked up correctly by IntelliJ. So make sure to not miss that. And then when you open up the pomxml file, let's have a closer look to a very clean pomxml file. You'll see the group ID artifact ID version. That's the ones you, you put in. And then you've got a property section and the dependency section and also a build section. Actually, I'll remove that because for beginners, it doesn't make too much sense to talk about that now. But another quick note, whenever you change something in a pomxml file, you see that idea prompts you Maven project needs to be imported because you changed something. And import changes means you change something in the pomxml file and then you manually have to click import changes. Enable auto import means that IntelliJ picks up the changes from a pomxml file automatically and you don't have to click import changes anymore or the button up here, which is the same button basically. And you can do enable auto import for simpler project. It will just work fine. Okay, so auto import is enabled and you'll see two properties. It's the project build source encoding UTF-8 property. And why do you need that? When you build the whole project, Maven will basically read in the files under source main resources, copy them to the jar file, and it will read them in with a platform dependent encoding, character encoding. So if you're on Windows, on Mac OS, on Linux, there's gonna be different platform encodings. And if you specify UTF-8 here, all platforms are gonna use the same encoding or you might run into encoding problems with the contents of these files. And Maven compiler, source target, easy to explain. You just can put in your Java number here, your JDK number. The source is the JDK version that you want to compile your source code with. The target version is the lowest version, Java version you want to support. And obviously, if you have new language features like Lambdas and Java 8, you cannot put a different or lower number here, like 1.5. That won't work. So in practice, you'll find these two numbers match most of the time. And then finally, you've got the dependency section, where you only have one dependency inside, JUnit dependency, which you'll also find in the external libraries section on the left. And there seems to be one transitive dependency as well, but we're going to talk about dependencies in detail in the next episode. So you have your Maven project and now you can open up your command line window again, or use the Maven project tool window here, click lifecycle, click package, and then Maven hopefully builds your project. And how does it build your project? Let's just quickly have a look. The first line is using Maven resources plugin. So it goes to source main resources and copies these two resources and puts them into the jar file. You've got the Maven compiler plugin, compiling one source file, which is source main Java app, the app class and puts it into the jar file. Then you've got the test resources. You've got test compile, which is your app test, which is not gonna be put into the jar file but it's being run by another plugin, it's the Shawfire plugin. And the Shawfire plugin says, well, I ran some tests, it's just one test, zero failures, everything was all right. And at the end, you'll have the Maven jar plugin, which builds a jar file, and that's the jar file of your application. And it puts everything under the target directory, also by convention. And you'll see target, you'll find your jar file here, your name with the version appended, and the char suffix. And when you go and open up something like Total Commander, you go to Bitcoin app, you go to source target, have a look inside of the char file, you'll see your com Marco Bela folder with the app class, compiled app class, and you'll see that Maven also put in the properties and migrations file from the source main resources folder into the same char file. And with that, you have successfully built a new Maven char file fully from scratch. You can share your Maven project to, with any other developer and they'll be able to run, set up, build the project as well, just like you did.
without having to install anything, Bob Maven. Congratulations, you just created a Maven project from scratch. And in the next episode, you're going to have a closer look at Maven's dependency management, not just how to add or remove them or keep them up to date, but also how to avoid the major pitfalls that involve dependencies. So let's get right after it.